Welcome to the Primitive Lifeways channel. In today's video series, I'm gonna take you step by step in how to make a digging stick. So stick around, we got a great show coming up. So folks, I wanna welcome you back. As you can see, we have our lumber harvested and this is pretty well seasoned. Before I start shaping this out and turning it into a tool, I wanna to discuss its early origins, talk about some of the past cultures and societies that have used and relied upon this technology for hundreds and thousands of years, as well as some of the archeological examples that I've worked with and conducted research on over the past few years. So the digging stick was very, very important and still is throughout the American Southwest and much of the West Coast. Many native peoples relied upon this technology as a life skill. So I've seen some really beautiful examples of all different sizes and shapes of digging sticks and different farming tools alike at places like Mesa Verde, the Smoky and Charlotte Hall Museums, the Malky Museum and other online resources. I've seen great hefty pieces of lumber used for prying out agave hearts and then shorter digging sticks like what we'll be working with where one would get on their knees and use it for more delicate tasks such as uplifting and harvesting different edible roots and tubers. Most examples that I've seen and worked with are made and constructed out of a hard dense wood. Mountain mahogany, scrub oak, manzanita, gambles oak, ironwood, creosote, so forth and so on, all very, very common, especially up here in the mountainous regions where we have a lot of hard, dense, rocky soils. This hardwood will offer a bit more longevity compared to your willows, sycamores, juniper, pine, uh, and cottonwoods. But that was used, so past cultures absolutely used soft woods. It really depended on the location. Up here, you'll find more examples of harder, denser woods. Like I said, it offers a bit more longevity in the long run. After the late archaic period in the American Southwest, many native peoples became heavily reliant upon dry farming. The Hohokam, who occupied the region of present-day Phoenix, Arizona, were absolutely the masters of dry and floodwater farming. Extensive irrigation canals were dug very deep and wide where seasonal monsoon rains would water their corn crops. In addition, the flowing of ancient waterways would drain into these canals providing much needed water to crops in a region that saw less than 10 inches of rainfall each year. Thanks to modern scientific studies, archaeologists are finding out more about the Hohokam people and how they live their lifestyles. One of the most amazing finds in local archaeology shows the Hohokam people dug these extensive irrigation canals using hardwood digging sticks of different sizes and lengths. In order to fully understand how digging sticks were constructed and used by traditional people, it is critical to see some of the original examples. Therefore, I decided to jump in my vehicle to meet up with respected archaeologist Dr. Andy Christensen and discuss this technology a bit further. Yes. All right, folks, so I'm here with Dr. Andy Christensen at the Smoke Eye Museum. And Andy, what do you got here? These are really amazing. Well, these are uh, two digging sticks, uh, not from North America. They're from Australia and from Southern Africa. And so I'll talk a little bit about uh, digging sticks in general and then a little bit about these specific digging sticks. Um, I had a professor at UCLA who, uh, Wendell Oswald, uh, Wendell Oswald, who uh, basically said the digging stick was the most elegant and versatile object made as a tool by humans. Absolutely. And he also said that in terms of living in a desert environment, uh, a culture would need three things. A spear, a projectile weapon, either a bow and arrow or an atlatl and dart, and a digging stick. Mm -hmm. So he placed uh, digging sticks very high on the list of human technology. And obviously it would probably goes back a long, long way. Yeah, and three, three you know, important things that even me as someone who replicates a lot of these items see. Um, bows and arrows, we work with them all the time. Digging sticks, same thing. We find that these actually have a, a less ecological impact than a shovel. They're not damaging root systems and, and important ecosystems. 
So uh, the two cultures uh, uh, that are represented by these digging sticks, and of course there's a whole world of cultures that use digging sticks, um, it's kind of interesting some differences and similarities. Uh, both of these cultures and many cultures of the world, the digging stick is made by the men. Absolutely. That's just the way it was, even though it was primarily the woman's tool. Mm. And so what happened was the man would make the digging stick, give it to, usually it'd be a wife, and she would then maintain it. Mm. And so it wasn't like she wasn't able to, able to use stone tools and whatever, right. but that's just the way the society operated. So um, in terms of use, I mentioned that women are the primary, primary users with um, digging sticks among the uh, Aborigines. Uh, apparently men did not use these very much. I haven't found a whole lot of reference. They were the, uh, the primary tool by the woman. Mm. Um, with, with the Kung, the Bushmen in Southern Africa, um, both men and women uh, use these digging sticks. And this particular digging stick comes out of a hunting kit that I have the complete, the oh, complete wow. kit with the spear and the bows and arrows and the fire hearth. And wow, the and you thing. said that was uh, from This Kung is from Bushman? Kung Bushman, mm. yes. So uh, you can see they differ somewhat in size. Um, they're pretty close here, but this is kind of a short Bushman digging stick. This is more typical of what would be used um, by women in the uh, Australian desert. They're used sitting on the ground or kneeling, okay? Mm -hmm. So unlike the, the human shovel, where we're standing up, right. they're down. And often used with one hand with a scoop to remove what you've just loosened. Right. And then remove, and then remove. So there's talk about um, uh, some of the uh, Kung women digging uh, holes up to six feet deep with these things. Right. So you can imagine, I don't know how they do that because they weren't that tall. They must have cl crawled into the hole. That's a lot of work with just a stick, huh? <laughs> it is. It is. So these are simple tools, but they supported a very complex adaptation. Definitely. And the adaptation was to a desert environment where you had to know when and where and what to find for food. Absolutely. And you were not doing too much storage uh, with the with the Kung, uh, the Kung Bushmen. They were uh, only storing food for two days. Oh, so wow. basically you had to go out and get food um, every other day, regardless. Um, there was no other choice. Now with the meat, if they had extra meat, they might have uh, dried that or something Deep, like that. Yeah, but generally the day-to-day -day kind of things that they, they ate were, uh, uh, were, were gathered every other day. Now this point, this happens to, to be kind of a beveled point, which is typical of, of the way the Bushmen yes. made theirs. Uh, on the other hand, the, uh, the Australian Aborigines did kind of a conical point, sort of like a pencil. And this is a really dense piece of lumber. Very, the, very Both dense. of these are pretty dense. Um, they, chose, uh, they chose to use wood that wouldn't break easily, exactly. obviously, things like that. There's evidence of actual firing, fire being used for this one. Yes. It's not clear that to me that the, the, the Kung actually fire their right. tips. Um, Heat treats it, makes it a bit more dense, withstands You can more kind of abuse. see it here. My yeah. feeling is that this one is probably uh, a real used um, digging stick. It has a nice patina on them. Yes. Actually, both of these have pretty nice patinas on them. This one doesn't look as, u as well used. Um, this one I just got on eBay, um, and so uh, it was. It's got pretty good evidence of use at both tips. Mm -hmm. Now notice that this one has two ends. Yep. Uh, with the with the Aborigines, often you would get two ends on digging sticks. Apparently, with the Bushmen, you only have the one end. Yeah. So it's just a different way of holding and, and using Different the craftsperson making yeah, it. exactly. And it's amazing with this one, you can see a lot of the scarring and the gouge marks from There's, when they crafted it's, it It's out. really interesting because they had to take the, uh, you see kind of a chatter marks yeah. along here from, re I guess, removing the bark. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I've seen at least one mention of a, uh, I'm not sure if it was an Aborigine woman or a Kung Bushman woman who 
thought her digging stick was so important that she arranged to have it passed down to her wow. daughter. That's amazing. Um, and you can feel, I mean, these are, these are, but you would think eventually they would break up to the point where they'd have to get a new one. Yeah, I, I tell you, feeling this, this digging stick right here, I can feel how this would withstand time and a lot of abuse. Of course, women being out in the field by themselves um, sometimes had to defend themselves. And it right. turns out the digging stick is a major um, Really? Yeah, major oh, weapon. Oh, wow. That I did yeah, not you can know. imagine. Interesting. Uh, um, having something like that in a person's hand. Yeah. Almost would, like a war club. Bother. Exactly. Yeah. Now, apparently the, uh, the Aborigines did have official war clubs that had grooves on the handle. Now, in this case, there's yeah. really two handles, but grooves to make it easier to hold. Mm -hmm. That would have been used by the men. So right. those are defined more like by the presence of grooves on them, which mm -hmm. neither one of uh, this one doesn't have. Yeah, so it's crazy. Sometimes you'll go into different private collections and even public collections, and you'll see these war clubs, and you just think of the history and what it could have been used for at the time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, these are really, really interesting. Um, very, very dense pieces of lumber. And uh, yeah, this is uh, quite straight too. Yeah, and, and that makes sense in terms of how you want to use the force. Um, now, if we want to go on uh, to the issue of, of uh, agriculture starting, these would remain to be important tools. Oh, definitely. But Especially be, here in the Southwest. Well, in the Southwest, but other, other areas in the world uh, prior to the arrival of, of metals. Mm. Um, and if you look at the information on, say, the Pima down in southern Arizona, the, uh, uh, the uh, Ootan, mm -hmm. uh, you see evidence of them digging their canals with sticks just like this. Yeah. They also did other things with sticks um, that would probably have been longer in terms of prying out, say, an agave or a plant, yeah. something like that. Big, hefty pieces and of And pounding lumber. it in. Yeah. Those, are, th those are sort of digging sticks, but they're a little different. Yeah. Um, with agricultural groups, you start getting a more diversity of tools that they would be using, wooden tools that they would be mm -hmm. using for, for uh, uh, putting the seeds in the ground, uh, running irrigation water, um, things like that. Right. I know even sometimes the ancient ones would take these pieces of stone, they would shape it out into a ring, drill out the center or peck it out, and they would attach it to the digging sticks and that would offer some weight. Apparently that did not happen with the, with the Kung. Um, I'm not sure I've seen anything like that with the Bushmen, but if you go into California, yes. you start seeing a lot of stone rings. Right. And they're called digging stick weights. They may have been doing other things with them, mm. but um, to add additional force uh, for digging, uh, you know, it's it's more work to do that, yeah, but it's also yeah. more force. Would so. certainly help, especially, you know, in more rocky, mountainous, hard-packed soils. It might. Yeah, it might very well. Um, so, so the question is, is anybody using digging sticks for their livelihood anymore? And I would guess that there are probably a few Bushmen women out um, still yeah. probably using a few of these. Uh, with with the metal coming in, of course, uh, metal replaced all of the uh, projectile tips and right. spear tips right. instantaneously. It didn't replace the uh, digging sticks as quickly. Um, and in Australia, it's hard to say. I've seen there's a couple of pictures I've seen online of Australian women, and they're using looks like really thick rebar or something. Yeah. A digging yeah. Stick. Metal so, is you know more convenient for sure. It's a, a lot easier to, some to extent, use to some extent. You know, but the, you can't make it yourself. You exactly. Have to get it. And, and it doesn't so have the, the certain uh, craftsman aspect to it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, sometimes I've, I've used uh, shovels for uprooting tubers, desert hyacinth yes. and, and uh, uh, mariposa lily. Right. And I've often damaged the tuber because the metal just slices right through it. Whereas this, you're you're taking a, a slower well, you're approach. It's a smaller, narrower exactly. area. You're, you're taking a slower approach. You're pay, paying much more close attention to details, right. and uh, it's much better, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, really cool tools, Andy. I appreciate you taking the time to explain it and share some of your private collections right. with us.
Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank I you. appreciate it.